want to speak about the utterance of grace. Um, I find this, uh, we've been talking about a lot of grace lately. And um, the Wednesday nights for the last while we've been talking about the God's Great Grace series. And you can add this into there, but we just chose not to put those titles anymore because that series would just get too long. And because God's grace is so great. It's so big. And today I want to talk about a little bit about what are we doing with our grace within us? And how do we bring it out to the people that we carry? How do we carry the grace that Jesus has given us by Him? How do we represent it to people? How do we bring it to people? How do we bring it forth? And so there's a lot of scriptures that are so cool with this. And um, I want to really f- focus, and I want you guys to, and I'm going to get to the scriptures. I just first of all want to make sure you all tuned in for a minute here. <laughs> so just, you know, I waste time sometimes just to make sure that everybody's listening for a while. Um, <laughs> Good, good. You know, the Lord is so good that He wants us to become a place of utterance. He wants us to bring forth with power and strength. And I think we need to understand that without us, without us as a vessel, that grace can't come to people. We have to take our role. We have to get off and get up. Whatever we need to do, we need to walk in grace and we need to bring that grace out. Walking in grace is good, but we need to do more than walking in grace. We need to have utterance of grace. We need to talk in grace. We need to bring it forth in His strength. And we, it's time to bring that forth, that anointing that God has for us. With God's grace, all things are possible. And I would encourage you to listen to my series on grace. If they're online, they're on YouTube, wherever, you can find them. Um, but I would listen, I encourage you to listen to them because I feel that we need to grab a hold of God's grace, what it all does. One, that one word, grace, has entailed so much in our life. And his favor, his charm, his lovingness, his kindness, his benefits that is in that word. Everything that of Jesus is in the word grace. Grace operates with the spiritual gifts. Grace operates with your love. Grace operates at your coffee time. Grace operates everywhere. And so if we can get a hold of God's grace and learn how to use God's grace, we're going to be very successful in everything we do. And so today we want to talk about that a little bit. It's so good to see people come to this um, new people today and I, I, I encourage you to, to I welcome you and I encourage you to just open your hearts today um, I am a different preacher than a lot of people are just allow your heart to be open today and so you know maybe you can just take your watches off if you want <laughs> it was just uncomfortable don't get too scared of me <laughs> um, because I've been told to, and God showed that to me many times, we need to be hell, run, uh, the Spirit needs to run through us. I would just encourage you to, I feel a little confusion right now, I feel that I need to get rid of that right now in the name of Jesus. Just relax, guys. Enjoy the day here. Enjoy the presence here. And so, let's just read Colossians 4, 2-6. to six. And I want to get passionate about this, so I need you guys to just really pull for me. Because I want to get passionate about this. This is great stuff. So let's just walk in this greatness that God has. And so, I'm going to read through um, uh, Colossians 4, 2 to 6, and, and I'm going to lead it up to the utterance of grace. But I'm going to talk about how to get there. And I think we have to understand the process of how to bring it out of us. If we don't understand the process, I can tell you, speak in grace, and like, what's that? Like, it would be that quick, right? We have to bring a process in place. And everything God does, He, he, he tells us how to do it. He brings us forth revelation and knowledge of to, how to do this. And um, I'm going to speak on this maybe shortly, but why did Jesus bring parables? Jesus brought parables because people would not understand the mysteries until somebody brought it out the parables. Jesus brought parables because, and I'm going to talk about it, actually scriptural, that he says that because nobody understands my mystery, so I have to bring understanding into the mystery. And so when we look at the Word of God today, and we look at this place, is to bring the revelation out, is bringing out it for today's culture. We're bringing it out for, to bring it alive for today, which brings into a place of parables a lot of times. It brings it into our situation as of today. And so we, if we want the mysteries, we need to be taught. We need to bring the revelation out to the world. And that's one thing with grace. It's bringing the revelation of Jesus out to the world. We're bringing it into a parable sense, meaning that we are bringing today's life and making this alive for, the, for today. God is alive, so we have to bring the life for today, and people need to understand that message for today. And so what do we do? We need to bring out a story. We need to bring out the revelation knowledge of what Jesus is. And that's grace. Verse 2. Continue in prayer, 
And this, this prayer means address to God. Continue addressing to God. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. So he says, the first thing we need to do is we need to continue prayer. We need to address to God constantly. We need to always bring our situations. We need to bring our lifestyle to God. And then it says, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. This watch, it says, be diligent in being thankful in thanksgiving. Be diligent. That word watch is be diligent. Pay strict attention of what God is doing in your life so you can be thankful for it. Being, watching means to be diligent, to be strict attention of what God is doing in your life. We need to start paying attention of the victories that God has given us. We need to start watching what God is doing in our life. And we need to start being thankful for those things. He says, give thanksgiving in the same way. He says, watch in the same way. In the Greek, it actually means to be diligent. It means to give strict attention to what God is blessing to you today in your life. Because what happens if we don't pay strict attention or watch? What happens is that we come into the place of denying because of circumstances overtake. So now we're not paying strict attention to what God is doing. And now we pay strict attention to what the enemy is doing. So what do we do to keep in God's grace and to flow out of God's grace? We need to pay strict attention. We need to watch. We need to watch in the same with thanksgiving. I think that's, to me, that's a big word today. Is that how many of us need to come into the place of saying, God, I need to be thankful for what you have done in my life instead of always focusing on everything that goes wrong in my life. Because when you start focusing on the thankfulness and you be diligent in the thankfulness, all the other stuff are so small. They become so easy to overrule because God's grace is so great. It is so big if we can do that. Verse 3 says, with, with all. And this word with all means together. With all. Together now, guys. Who's, who's with me? Together now. With all. Praying also for us. Come on, guys. We need to start praying together. We need to start praying for each other. We need to start lifting up the place. We need to start being that togetherness of church. God's grace can only flow through me if I choose to do for your sake, not for my sake. And vice versa. We need to come in the place of being together in God's kingdom. He says, with all, which means together, praying also for, for us, God, that God would open us the door of utterance. <laughs> how do we open the door of utterance? First of all, I, how many knew there was a door of utterance? You know what? We need to start opening the door of utterance. And this word utterance here means saying. That actually means the word of Christ coming out of you. That when we come and pray together, and that God, that we pray that God would open His revelational knowledge so we can understand His ministry. That we can understand who He is in us. That we can understand how to live and be successful in life. That's what the utterance is. Now the word of utterance comes through. Now it brings forth that this, the grace that's within us, the words that's within us, becomes power that flows out of us. There's a door. If there's a door, it has to be open. You might have to knock for a while. But if there's a door, you need to open it. How do you open it? You get together. It doesn't say come alone. It says get together with all praying. Come on, guys. We need to be church. We need to be churches and churches joined together. We need to be church. We need to be the body of Christ that goes all the way with Christ. We need to start saying, well, maybe we should go there, maybe we should go there. And he says, thank God that you're going somewhere. Thank God that you meet Jesus there. Thank God that you're praying there. Thank God that you're doing something there. And when we come into that place together, all of a sudden this door opens up. And all of a sudden, you know what? If we join together, I guarantee God's word is powerful. If we join together in what God is going to do after this service, like I have huge expectation for this night. Huge expectation of, of deliverance, of healing. But guess what we need to do? We need to come together. Even if you're not the one praying, you need to come together if you're here. You need to become an agreement saying, I am giving everything I have here, and I'm coming in agreement to do God's will here. And when we do that, God's grace will flow out with utterance. His word, His power will release like never before. And I've experienced many times, if I have a, a church full of people that agree, there's way more stuff that happens up here. If we have one or two people that agree, we have still have some stuff happening here, but we're not as much stuff. But we have the stuff that we need if we come together. We need to come into agreement. We need to allow that door to be open, guys. And come with me and let's open that big door of revelation, of that utterance, which this word utterance agrees means God's account, God's singing, God's speech, God, the word of Christ itself come out. And then it says, um, to speak the mystery of Christ. Why does the door have to open up? Because we need to start speaking the mystery of Christ. You know what? There's a mystery to be found. All right. 
And you know what? Um, they say that it takes about 96 years every three seconds to count the characteristics that you have in your DNA. So the fact is you have all of your lifetime to find new stuff. Every moment, every second, that is just what I breathe there, I have new, something new right now that I can take. Now, okay, now again, like it's just that fast, there's always something new within us because Christ's grace is so great. It is scientifically proven to count your DNA, to count who you are in Christ, or even to count the characteristics in you. It takes about 96 years if you would count it every three seconds. Meaning that you should never be bored in life. <laughs> Meaning that you should always expect something new. Meaning that, well, that's just the same old thing. No. That same old thing can be new every day for you. Choose to walk in the new that you, God has created. That's why he said, renew your mind daily, because he knew that there was something new every day. <coughs> and if you want to do it every twice a day, renew your mind, then do that. Because there's enough room for that too. There is so much newness, new stuff that God has for you. That utterance, that, that mystery that he has, that secret, hidden stuff that he has for you is waiting to be revealed. But it can't be revealed unless if we open the door of utterance. And we need to open that door of utterance so that the mystery of God can be spoken to us. To speak, this word speak is to utter, to make a voice, to, to bring it forth. It's, it's to bring it forth with power and with revelational knowledge. To speak, it's not, just a, it's not just a word now. It's not just my voice speaking now, but it's the revelational knowledge, the rhema word of the Bible, the word of God, to come out at you and to become alive to you. Rhema is, is, a, is a spoken word. Logos is the written word. This is the Logos. Logos is good, the Logos word, but the, the Rhema is better because when you take the Logos and the Rhema, you get life. And you need to get the life of the word. That's just Greek a little bit for you. Um, and so you need to get the Rhema word, the life out of the Bible, even though it's written already, but there's life in it. And that's what this word, speak the mysteries of Christ, means. It's because God wrote a book. And he wrote it for us Christians. And he put it full of mysteries because he didn't, didn't want just anybody to misuse it. And he brought it so that we can bring life for our life every day. That we can find something new in it every day. To me, that's exciting. Are we with me? Amen? Yes, maybe? Okay, good. With Christ. And it says, For which I also am bound. Meaning that I am bound in those mysteries. I am... I need, I need to find myself in that place and out of that place. But it says, verse 4, that I may make manifest as I ought to speak. See, the thing is, now that we've found the mysteries of Christ, now that the door of utterance is open, we have to make it manifest. It has to become life to us. It has to become action to us. Now, when you say healing, it actually has to have a manifestation of healing. Now, when you speak glory, there has to be a manifestation of glory. Now, when you say miracles, there has to be a manifestation of miracles. There has to be that manifestation but that's how great God is. And to, I'm going to share some good scriptures here yet, uh, at, with this at the end here when I do this. I, can't even, I can barely wait to get there, but I know I have to go through the process. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this word manifest, to make it manifest, means to make manifest or to visible or invisible or visible. Which has been seen or which has been hidden or has been unknown. It's to make it manifest. It's to make it visible. So if you come here with a Let's go say a, a fractured bone. <laughs> and you come here and and you come here for that and it's not known yet, but it becomes known right here. It becomes manifest. That bone becomes complete because of the utterance of his word becomes light from us. The thing is that we have lots of learn as humans, and we seem to always kind of shadow away from that. And we don't realize how much God really cares for us because we we think we know better. We just rebel as children sometimes. But God wants us to know that His healing is His passion. <coughs> his grace is what He lives for and that's what He breathes for. He breathes that. And I'm going to show it to you. I can't wait, but I'll get there. <laughs> and so when we make manifest by words or by action, but it becomes real to somebody. So I want to challenge you today. Who are you talking today? And who is becoming, is Jesus coming real through you to somebody today? I'm challenging you. Because we have it within us if we choose to walk it together. Verse 5. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. He says, now there are a lot of people without. And we go to this world and there are a lot of people that don't have this um, utterance of word. They don't have this, 
speech and the mystery be found. He says, no, use wisdom when you get out there. And you know what? Some people don't use wisdom at all. They just go out there and speak. It hasn't helped them yet, has it? In most cases, it doesn't help. But when you use wisdom toward them that are without, and that word toward means the ones that, have, that you have advantage over, the ones that don't understand this, the ones that come into a place of, of just not knowing. And if I would go to somebody that without wisdom, I'd probably scare them off and they probably wouldn't come back and they might call me all kinds of things that probably wouldn't be so, but they, that's how they judge me according to how I approach them. And so how are you approaching people today? With this great grace that we have, with this great utterance that we have, how are you approaching the people? He says, well, do it with wisdom. Do it with understanding. Do it with a place of greatness of Jesus Christ. And then it says, I'll just read that verse again. Walk. It means make opportunity. That word walk means make opportunity, make process. Actually, get something done. Walking doesn't mean just walking around in circles. It actually means doing something, getting something done. It means go find some opportunities to go with wisdom toward the people that don't know. So find an opportunity to. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. People have lost time. And there are people that are sitting there, God, it's too late for me. No, God is a redeeming God. God has such great grace that it redeems. You are not too late today. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, it's not too late today to you to find a fulfillment of Jesus Christ completely and be satisfied and find purpose in life and find a reason to live. It is absolutely never, ever too late because we have a redeeming God. This redeeming God means that to be redeemed, to the payment of price, to recover from the power of another, meaning that He's redeemed us from that power of the enemy. He has given us the ability to redeem the time what the enemy has stolen. What He has given us the ability to... He's stolen our health. How many can say that sometimes? He's stolen our finances. It is time to redeem. It's time to get God's great grace. It's time to open that door of utterance, of that power, of that strength, of His great grace, and to be able to flow and say no more. And it's time to walk in it. No more until next time. Then you can say that again. Because the fact is, we are in a battle. Battles are meant to be enjoyed. They're not meant to be discouraged in. I mean, warriors. Come on, be warriors in Christ Jesus. It's okay to battle. It's okay to fight. I mean, I would be lying to you and saying that if you won one victory, then you won't have another fight. That's why you get a victory, so you can win the next fight. You don't win a victory, so you can just be finished. <laughs> There's no such thing. You win a victory so that you understand how to win your next battle, so that you can win more things for Christ Jesus, so you can win more people for Christ Jesus, so you can win more healing, so you can win more miracles. Battle is fun. If you fight as an army. You know what? Those shows of individual heroes being able to do it all their lives, just so you know, they don't work. And <laughs> In Christianity, you can only become a hero as a body. You can't become a hero as an individual. You can only become a hero as when Jesus is the head and you're the body. It's only with, it's with all praying together. It's with all joining together for the strength of God. And it's for with all. That's how I can preach. It's because you're, you're listening today. You're receiving today. That's what the power releases is that when the with all gets together. And when we come and say, God, we're here to meet you and what you're doing here. And so here it goes. And that redeem, it's a, it's a place of ransom. In, in, in a Christian sense, it is of a of Christ freeing the elect, or the um, the damnation, I can't pronounce it, right, but um, of the Messianic laws, to free the people from the law and bring them into the freedom. It is a place of redeeming them from the rituals, but bringing freedom into Christ Jesus. So it's also a place to make a, a place of ransom payment. Redeeming. You know what? Jesus died for your ransom. Just listen carefully to that. He didn't die because he deserved help. He died because the enemy had you ransom. If you want to listen to my message, you don't deserve hell, and you would understand what I'm talking about. It's also online or on YouTube. Just understand that Jesus paid for your ransom. What is a ransom? It's when a child is taken from their family. The enemy has you ransom. And when the enemy has you in ransom, it's paid for. Because God will pay the ransom so that you can have you back for him. That you can take. His grace is so great, isn't it? That he can, he actually give ransom because he knew the enemy took us from him. 
And now, here, I'm going to pay the cost. No matter what it takes, I am winning my people back to me. Jesus died, and Jesus, God sent his son so that that ransom can be paid. That's what the redeeming life has power for. Redeeming time. And this redeeming time, this time is an opportunity and due time. It's your season. Is it today your season to be redeemed? You can choose to have a season of redeeming. It's time to redeem the time that's been stolen from you. It is time to connect with all together for the same purpose and say, God, we're not letting the enemy fool us no more. Okay, let's go on to verse 6. My last verse. Until, until my next scripture. <laughs> let your speech be always. Let your speech, which is a, um, the utter, that force, always. This word always means at all time be with grace. That's where we make a mistake. We don't put it at all times. No, I'm always in the Greek, it's preferring to always. Like always means all the time. It means not missing out. It means living in it. Always. Never missing out. Always. How many can say always means always? Yeah? It means all the time. See, the thing is that to be successful in Christ Jesus, we need to live in Christ Jesus. To be successful in His grace, we need to live in His grace so we can give His grace. So we need to do it always, all the time. Not, not, don't miss out. Speak. It says here, let your speech always, all the time, be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. How many of you, how many of us have been successful answering every man? I won't raise my hand. I've not always been successful with it. But how do you become successful? Is that we get the utterance of grace. We come in the place of saying, this grace, this benefit, this favor that's within me, this, this kindness, this lovingness that God has, this, this full package that He has, if I live in that with utterance, I become to a place where I can answer people as I ought to. Because now I live like Christ Jesus. I live in the place Jesus lives. Like, maybe I'm not perfect at that yet, but I think I'm getting better at it. And I think we all can get better day by day at it. And I, 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 I want to put an argument out there shortly. Just so you know. Season with salt. Salt means zeal. You've got a speech, opportunity. Talk like you know it. Talk like you mean it. Mean that you mean it. Talk like Jesus is alive in you. Talk with zeal. Talk that He is the only God. Talk like Jesus is the Savior. When you say Jesus can change your life, actually mean that He can change your life because He can. You know, we become so religious. Yeah, you should become born again because Jesus will just free you. And we don't believe that sometimes. And we say, then they say, well, prove it to us. And then we say, well, um, uh, I'm going to believe for a little bit more healing for myself first and then I'm going to come back to you. No. <laughs> That's not how it works. The word within us is not conditioned to us. That grace is not conditioned to us. That grace is God Himself. It's Jesus Christ that lives within us. has nothing to do with us. We can always speak in confidence with authority because the Word of God is not based on you. It's based on Jesus Christ. You get the blessing of it because it's in you. So when we walk in this grace, just because you're not healed, well, you still can pray and get people excited for healing. Because your circumstances doesn't take away the promise of His healing. It doesn't move it. It doesn't budge it. To God it just says, well, I'm coming, don't worry. It's coming. I just want you to do a few more things, and here's the process I want you to take, and you just got to be a little bit more patient. And whatever He may say to you, but don't ever, ever come to a place where you don't have zeal for Christ Jesus. Because if you go out there, people want to see the zeal of Christ Jesus. They want to see the salt. And it says that, you, so that, you know why they want to see it? Because you know what? If I'm excited, people will listen to me. If I'm excited for Jesus, and I can't help it because I'm addicted to Him, <laughs> I'm addicted to the Word of God, I just can't help myself, i got to go all the way no matter what. I will push whatever it takes. I will do whatever it takes to bring Jesus up there. And people can come against me, and I will push right over that, and I will go again. And I will never, ever stop because I know what I have here. So do you. We have such greatness. But, but George, that doesn't look right. Well, the fact is, I'm George, and you are you. It doesn't need to look right for you. 
I know what Jesus is for me, and so you should know what Jesus is for you. Jesus brings me out of my character. And I'm a pretty wild character. So I'm a shy person, but I'm, 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 I like to be just out there. God wants you to be out there in your own way. What way is that for you today? So what is God's grace? And I'm just going to say it again. I've been saying it so many times. God's grace is this. It is His joy. It is His pleasure. It is His delight. It is His sweetness. It is His charm. It is His lovingness. It is His peace. Uh, sorry, I can't just say it right. Grace of speech. It is His goodwill. It is His loving kindness. It is His favor. It is His mercifulness. It is His holy influence upon every person. It is His Christians have His virtue, the power within them. That's what grace is, the virtue of Jesus Christ. It is, it is His divine grace, not just grace. It is His divine grace. It is the grace. It is the beyond everything. It is a token of proof of His grace. It is His benefit. It is His plenty of this. It, is, it is His prosperity. It is everything you can think of is within grace. It is His services to you and to them. To Him. It is His reward for you. A reward that you all deserve to have within you. So Jesus has grace for you today. And it, we need to start talking in grace. We need to start living in grace. We need to start speaking and utterance the power of grace. Because when we end in, when we utterance, when we open the door of utterance in us, we need to start manifesting it. We need to allow it to happen. The Lord is calling us to stop judging and stop thinking and start stop reasoning everything away that you see. As far as I know, Christ Jesus is way smarter than all of us. And we're here judging Him how He should do His work. Stop. I'm going to show you with the scripture. I'm getting to a point here. You know why I'm saying that? It's going to go on YouTube everywhere. That's why I'm saying this. I'm not just talking to everybody here. It's going to, we, 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 we're seeing some good evidence of this being online. The Lord is calling us to do His work. And when I do the work of God, and when the power of the Holy Spirit is going to come to me, it's not going to look like me no more. Because Jesus takes over. Jesus, take the wheel, eh? <laughs> I have to say that. <laughs> When you're in trouble, you know, sometimes you just have to let Jesus take the wheel. And I think we're too scared to do that because we think we need the control. When Jesus takes the wheel, he's going to make it a very, very fun ride, possibly. Possibly a very scary ride. To him, it's just normal. But to us, it's ah! We just fly in his anointing. So let's just read something here because I want you to understand that his grace is for you. And you that came for a miracle today and a healing, it is for you. It's the very breath that He breathes. It is what He is. It's His compassion. So I'm going to read Mark 1, 40 and 41, and maybe, maybe a little further. Mark 40. Mark 1, sorry, 40 and 41. This is New King James Bible. Now a leper came to Him, implor imploring Him, kneeling down to him, saying to, to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. If you are willing. I love the answer. Then Jesus moved with compassion. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. It's not a matter if he's willing. It's a matter if we're willing. He reached out his hand. He said, of course I'm willing to do this. He's moved with compassion. It is, the healing is a symbol of his compassion. It's a symbol of who he is. And we say, we come to, to the altar and we say, well, Jesus, only if it's your will. You need to listen to my, my message that we just did last week, that will be done. <laughs> Jesus wrote the will for us. That's why we can do it, his will. This is the will of God. And what I talked about last week is a little bit saying that we all make a will, don't we? For our family so that we, they get the right inheritance. Well, Jesus wrote the will for us, so we have the right inheritance. So if that will be done, it means that you have to operate according to the inheritance that has been written for us. His will is done. 
but you can listen to that. But it's a really, the whole idea is that he is willing, that's why he created a will for us. He created a living word for us so that we can live in it. So we didn't have to go wonder, well, God, is this for me or not? No. He wrote a will so we knew our inheritance. Because he died on the cross. And when he died on the cross, his inheritance opened up to us. He rose again, but he left his inheritance because that's the law of death. It's his inheritance is passed on. Now his whole inheritance, his whole will is passed to us. So now it's not a matter of saying, God, do you want to heal me? But is it in your will? Oh, yeah, there's an inheritance written right here. Now we got the will of God. Be excited to know that. And then it goes on and says, And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him. Immediately. And he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once. And I, I wonder why Jesus did that, but let's just go read on a little bit here. And he said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone. But go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer it for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded in the testimony of them. So here's this guy that got totally healed. Leprosy left him. It was his will, and he was happy to do it, but Jesus warned him. He says, now don't go tell anybody until you go talk to the priest. You know what we do? We forfeit our healing a lot of times because our big mouth. We forfeit it because we go tell people and they discourage us and say, no, that can't be. You know why? He said, talk to a priest so you have proof, so you can prove it to the people that you are healed. We often forfeit our healing because we are foolish with our healing. We're foolish with what we get from God. We go talk to people and, oh, wow, that was a powerful day. I let go of that God ministry. And we go talk to a religious status or something and say, well, you shouldn't go there. That's, I don't know if that's of God. Guess what happens? You lose your healing. I've seen it many, many times. People are too busy forfeiting their healing when they need to get proof of their healing. They need to walk in the steadfastness of their healing. And when Jesus said this to him, he said, go, go tell nobody. I, I'm sure he couldn't shut up and he probably did. But tell the right people so that you can actually have the, have the support you need to hold on to that healing. To hold on to that thing. What I have come to the conclusion of it's God's will. I believe about 95, maybe 99 percent of people get healed when they're up there, but a lot of times it's forfeit because <laughs> it's God's will to heal, right? God wants to heal, but what well, it's it's our doctors maybe saying something, it's maybe maybe our family members saying something. You have to stick with the process of what God has called you to walk in, and so God uses prophets sometimes. God uses prophetic words sometimes, saying you need to do this and this and this, and you walk in that process. All of a sudden you see the fullness of your healing because you actually walk the process. So when you look at this scripture, and there's many, many more, it's not about if we are, it's more about if we're willing. God is waiting for His grace to shed on you whatever you need to do. He is so waiting. In the last two, since last Wednesday, there is a new anointing on me, and I cannot hold still no more. <laughs> that power of God flew through that that was a powerful night and it's going to be another powerful night if you choose to let it be and I was talking like this and I said God I thought you were going to show me power and when we start praying and it just went wild there's a source and there's a power coming through that I never understood before because but I never experienced it before and it's the anointing it's a raising dead anointing Romans 8 and 11 it is a raising dead anointing that we have now and guess what that does? You know, that just raises you spiritually. We don't have dead people here, so you have to focus on what needs to be raised up from the dead. It might, it might be your purpose that needs to be raised up from the dead. It might be, might be you unborn, you need to be born again. Whatever it may be, you need to rise up. If you want to bring dead people, we can definitely try that too. It's a little harder to do these days with the Manitoba laws, but... <laughs> but the fact is, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. You know what? If somebody wouldn't get raised up from the dead the first time I prayed for them, I would never ever be discouraged. Because I know I'm not God. I know I have to perfect myself to that point where I can believe for that. Uh, but I will never, ever quit. If you don't get healed the first time, come again. Come 30 times if you have to. Take the inheritance, whatever it takes to take it. Sometimes you have to work for the inheritance. 
Sometimes you have to plow the field. If you get a field, if you leave it standing, it's just weeds. But when you plow the field of your inheritance, you get something out of your inheritance. So don't go and look at this and say, Oh God, I have this inheritance of healing, so I confess it. I confess that field to grow. But if you're not planning on it and seeing it, it's doing you no good. So confess all you want. Have fun. But confess after it's sown, then confess the prosperity. After the seed is sown, then confess. So you say, well, God heals me, but come and get the seed of healing. Come and get the prayer of healing, so you can confess the healing. So you can confess the prosperity of your healing. Confess the wholeness of grace. Jesus Christ is here for you today. He is so real, and I feel so great. <laughs> it is coming, man. Woo! Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, one thing God has shown me, I, I'm not in the fear of people no more. If you come here, you're going to see me wild every so often. Well, not always. You're going to see me get excited. And if I can see the power on me, and I'm just going to enjoy it. If you don't want to enjoy it, that's your problem. But I am going to go all the way. What about you? It is time to plow through. It is time to bring the utterance of grace and allow it to see his miracle today. Today is the day. That last Wednesday, God, during the day, God gave me another level of authority, which is very <coughs> humbling. And I don't know if anybody you would understand that, but it's so humbling when I got that. That source, it's so humbling. Like, God, like, I am just a simple person. You are allowing me this? Like, wow. Like, it, it's humbling. It, it, there's no way to put it. Like, like, when you get such, when greatness comes into you by Christ Jesus, it's just humbling because, because it's just, you, you can never ever feel, or you ever can never ever feel the height. You can never feel good enough sometimes to get to that point, but God sees you good enough. Today, God wants to get you to another level. Take that another level, okay? God wants you to do that. So we'll get 